so I promised a big announcement in this next video and I uh, just want to set the record straight here that it's not going to be as big as moving or an engagement, but it is pretty big. Um, a lot of you guys will have heard of the grudge match that's going to be going on between Doug Polk and Daniel Negreanu. You're here because you want to know what's going down with my heads up challenge with Daniel Negreanu. Doug is playing a bunch of heads up matches against basically whoever. And uh, I decided to throw my hat in the middle of the ring. And then throw my hat in the ring. Where does that come from? Anyway, I decided to throw my hat in the ring. I'm going to be playing Doug heads up on Friday, August 28th. 6 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time, it's 3 to 7 Pacific, and I don't think Doug will be streaming, but I will. As far as prepping for this, I don't play a lot of Heads Up, so I am going to be playing more Heads Up um, cash games specifically on Color Up. So if you're not on Color Up yet, you can go to colorup.poker, sign up with registration code Matt, that's all lowercase. And uh, yeah, when I'm at the Heads Up tables, you can feel free to sit me. Um, I might start setting up some scheduled matches with people if I'm not getting enough uh, action when I'm sitting. I've already had a couple people offer, so um, shout out to those guys, and I've already played a little bit. So the next several videos you see will probably be all heads up content. That's the news. If you're not on Color Up, I recommend you get on there, even if you don't want to play me heads up. Uh, that's where I play most of my cash game volume these days. And uh, join Discord. Discord's where you can ask all sorts of questions about Color Up, or uh, just hang out with everybody else who watches the vlog. They're like 600 members strong and probably maybe like 50 to 80 who are like pretty active a lot of the time. So uh, it's a lot of fun and you'll just get a lot of updates about stuff a lot quicker there. I think that's about it. So let's get on into the rest of the Poker Out Loud Hands, which if you didn't see the last video, this is when I was in Vegas in January and I played on the Run It Up slash Solve For Y live stream 1-3 game. Let's get into it. What music choices do you think the table is going to select? Hunt is the biggest stumper to me. I couldn't even begin to guess what his music. I feel like he's like a, he listens to both death metal and journey <laughs> in the same playlist. I would have went with like classical, just like a little no. Mozart. No, he's too hard for that. Yeah. No one makes a play like that. That's like true. Like he just did that, and that listens to classical true. music. It's for sure death metal. That's why it's in there. What's the banana game and do I want to know? We're playing six max. We're actually five handed right now, so I have a pretty clear open from this position. And I'm going to be using a typical size of 15. 15 is the bet. Coming on open, still five handed. This hand just needs to be appeal. No sense in three betting, no sense in folding. Go up 50. So he's been calling a lot of the time three flop when I'm opening. Um, it's not just me, but I do think that I'm probably considered to be one of the weaker players here. This board it probably doesn't matter a whole lot. I can bet it a lot, but my king high actually has a lot of showdown value. So I'm just going to start with a check here. Never check folding unless he goes for a really crazy side. Check. Facing a check on this board, he should be checking quite a lot of his range in this spot. I think I'm just going to check back with some back doors and see what happens. Check. So sticking with the same theme, uh, this card doesn't really change the board a whole lot. Um, King High still has showdown value. I don't think I really need to change the plan up a whole lot here, again, unless uh, some interesting sizings come out. If he does start betting and goes for multiple streets, it's gonna be a little bit uncomfortable on rivers, but still planning to check call here. Sure.
placing another check. I just really don't want to bluff with this hand. I'm just going to check back and give up. Check. I think pretty much the same thing now as before. Uh, it's definitely a little bit awkward. I think I end up fairly capped once I check three streaks on this board, aside from a couple of slow plays. But I think we're going to see Shodan pretty often here. It's a little uncomfortable now if we check and he bets uh, any sort of reasonable size because he can have a lot of 10s here. But um, still going to stick with the plan. Still going to check and try to see a showdown. Check. Well, after facing a check for the third time and rivering the best card we could possibly hit, we got to go for some value here. I'm just going to go small. Nine is the bet. Nine. Nine. Okay, so he's bet nine dollars here, which uh, definitely is gonna make me have to call with a huge portion of my range here. Um, there aren't a whole lot of hands that I get here with to check three times. I would think I'm somewhere in the middle with this exact holding. Um, it feels a lot like he has something like fours through nines, or even maybe is value betting like a, a good king, like king queen. Um, I still just think we probably have to call here to see what he has, um, and we won't play a hand like this again anytime soon, but we're, we're going to make the call and see what's going on. No shockers there. Standard. That hand was fascinating to me. Um, so I think 10-9 suited can 3-bet preflop. Uh, okay. The decision to call, I think, is a little bit on the loser side, but not a big deal. It's totally fine. Uh, I think... Matt's decision to not see bet flop is a bit problematic. He has a really good candidate to start betting. Um, and I think that... Uh, You're saying that because he blocks like ace-king, ace-jack? Yeah, and he's also opening in the earliest position. You know, it's low jack in okay. accordance to a nine-handed game. So he has the strongest range here. He has massive range advantage. All right, so I have a very playable hand here. A lot of times I would use this to three bet, but because we've seen this player fold a lot to three bets, I'm not sure that really accomplishes much. Um, I can also probably stand a 3-bet from the other players in the hand, too. So I'm going to call. This hand also plays fine multi-way better than some of the other spots. So I'm going to go ahead and call um, and be pretty much okay with any outcome here. Cool. <laughs> All right. Race from Jimmy, peel on the button. This hand is a monster. We will definitely be three betting. We should go pretty large and make it at least 60 in this spot. We can withstand a four bet pretty easily. Bucky, the, the pooch can't, he can't catch a break. 65? I mean, it's unfortunate, <laughs> but he's also at bottom of range. Uh, this is uh, kind of annoying again, because this is actually somehow the best hand we've faced a three bet with the entirety of the session but still in this exact spot i think our hand's just a little bit too weak to try to peel even though it's kind of close but i think like a pip up we could consider healing or getting aggressive this but kid has I heart think that this is just like a very good bold candidate his discipline is unreal <laughs> just a pip up we're gonna call all right so this is not all that shocking based on what i already said um not surprised to see the original Razor fold, not surprised to see this three bet, and I think our hand is too good to fold still. Um, we can be ahead, we can also connect with many different kinds of boards. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just call no reason really to back race here, I don't think. So to me, his hand really looks like pairs that are dominated or suited cards. So me holding the queen of hearts in my hand is a very relevant blocker here. I need to see about this board a very high frequency, and I think I need to go <clears throat> probably 30 or 40 percent. I'm going to bet 50. Is it 
50? Yep. Okay. So I think uh, my range prefab looks very pocket bear heavy, Broadway mm -hmm. heavy, but at the same time, he's representing all the strongest hands pre, so not surprised to see the Siva. I think he'll do that with um, maybe not his entire range. He definitely, I think, will have some of the second pairs that he'll check. Uh, he may slow play a couple of hands, but um, all in all, definitely clear cut call here. Absolutely no reason to raise, um, but can't get away just yet, and probably not to a second barrel either. So in this spot, I could keep betting for value. Wonder how often he's actually trapping here with, with hands like. I love to just see the brain melt. With hands like ace king, I block one combo of king queen in this spot. I don't really see him peeling with king queen too much. Maybe he's trapping with aces. Four kings in this spot. I do think I'm gonna keep betting and keep betting pretty small with the Queen of Hearts blocker in my hand. It's about 150 plus. I'm gonna bet. I bet 80. 80 is the bet. 100. 80. 80. All right, so this sizing is a little bit surprising to me um, based on what we saw pre-flop and in some previous hands where if you just went for a large sizing uh, when I didn't have a ton behind. Um, I'm not positive what the sizing indicates. It seems like he's trying very hard not to polarize here, but um, I don't really know why he would be trying to do that. There might not be like a huge motive here other than just trying to string me along, which is obviously a concerning possibility, but I think our hand in our range is like way too strong. I don't really ever show up here with significantly better. Um, although some of my draws have a probably better equity against his value hands than what I hold right now. Um, definitely gonna call one more time. Price we're getting is still very good. So with this hand, it's a no brainer. To be clear, Kevin only has one out because the queen in diamonds was um, was already seen in another hand. And you'll see some players just pause because uh, just to maintain so that the, the sound gets muffled up. Whoa! <laughs> that was a very interesting card. With him calling twice and us having the queen of hearts in our hand, there's not really too many flushes he can have in this spot. The last nine makes it less likely he has pocket nines. So in this spot, I have to decide if I think I'm value betting or bluffing with my current hand. SBR is less than one. Could very easily have Ace, queen of hearts, queen, jack of hearts. I think I'm going to turn my hand into a bluff to try and get him to fold a king. Maybe he did trap preflop with ace, king. And I'm going to wager all of my chips. Players all in. All right, so this is a pretty weird run out for us. Um, a lot of his logical double barrels are two heart holdings, but it's kind of weird to take this line uh, when there's a double paired board. I think the issue here is that we don't necessarily look like we have just a nine here ever. Uh, so he may not even be concerned when he has a flush that we could have better. Um, that being said, there's just not that many combinations of flushes, uh, things like ace, queen, ace, jack, not sure if he three bets ace 10 suited, but he may. Uh, queen jack, queen 10, jack 10. It's possible there's more than that, but I'm not convinced he would even value jam the worst flushes. Uh, I think it's very likely that Pocket Kings checks the flop, um, although if he does bet flop, he would probably 
probably keep going and the sizing does make sense. Um, I think I think his turn sizing is kind of concerning me here because I sort of would have expected him to polarize earlier in the hand with a lot of his bluffs, but uh, at the same time, like it's sort of hard to put this together. Uh, it's also only a pot size bet. Um, there are a lot of logical river bets, even if the turn size is a little confusing. Uh, his turn size could honestly just be to set up this exact spot, which is basically uh, a pot size jam. He also has plenty of those combos available in ace queen with an ace of hearts, ace jack with an ace of hearts. Um, and depending on how wide he's three betting, there could be more. Uh, I'm just, uh, it sucks that we don't have any blockers or anything. I just am not sure I uh, believe here, uh, especially when this was set up so perfectly. I've, I've paid him off once already in a, not quite this size of pot, um, but I think this really comes down to he can't put us on boats and I have a king and I'm just really not gonna fold without a better reason to, so I'm gonna call. I wish I could cut that out and just play it over and over and over again. Like that was the best demonstration of deductive reasoning that I think I may have ever seen displayed on Poker Out Loud. Like that is on the surface such a difficult spot and like he was immediately calling the second that the chips hit the middle. He just took a long time to explain it. I still don't understand. Uh, like I, I'm KG's line, by the play. Yeah, KG's line is just uh, not intact with what his range should be doing. Yeah. So, but I, I agree with that. I was Brian. saying he went too big. It's not. So, it's not Brian. It, it's the pooch. No he just knows. He, he saw it right through it. Turn into bet. Yep. Music. All right. So, just a standard button open spot here wide range. I have queen 10 suited, which is going to play well as a three bet or a call. Uh, the last time I did call here, I did get three bet. I don't know what hand three bet there, um, but I think this hand is going to play a little bit better as a three bet than the last one and uh, will benefit more from isolation too. So I'm going to go to my typical out of position size in this game, which is 5x, 50. 50 is the bet. Raise and a re-raise here. Good four bed, good fold. 50. Okay. So we get three bet again. It's becoming a theme here. So <coughs> we don't have really the best hand to continue as a call. Um, we certainly don't really want to be flicking in 40 here with her exact hand. It's not the worst candidate to turn into maybe a four bet. Uh, we are playing like, we got about 650. Uh, he's got us covered easily. Um, I'm not sure, this is getting more, you know, feel and intuitive, but I'm not sure how 4-bet capable that might be perceived right now. I'm also not sure if you just heard me talking. Probably didn't. Um, I'm not sure exactly how 4-bet capable people think I am right now. Um, not the worst candidate for a four bet fold. Doesn't play horribly in position when he calls. Um, I don't really expect him to jam really wide. So I think we'll probably maybe try to make a stand a bit here. But it definitely feels, I wouldn't say it feels forced, but it does feel based on the fact that I'm not exactly sure how capable they think I am of doing this light. So we'll see. 135 is the raise. Let me turn my music on. Okay, so we do face a four bet here to 135. Um, I think this is the four, first uh, four bet he's made, but this is a dynamic where we could definitely uh, see this start up with some weaker holdings. And uh, they obviously know by now that I've been three betting and doing some four betting without top. Um, this hand's still actually going to play reasonably well heads up and we are fairly deep so I do think I'm going to continue here. Um, not going to be five betting probably anything in this spot but clearly not five betting this hand either. Um, so I'm going to call and we're going to see a flop. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, I'm going to be checking my entire range here, so um, nothing really changes. Uh, we don't really flop anything though, so this is pretty often just going to be a check fold. Um, well, for our exact hand, we can't really ask for that much better of a flop. It's also worth noting that, you know, we're certainly repping the over pairs here. And while he can flat four bets with aces here, absolutely. Probably has less kings than me. Um, we block queens. And this is generally a board where uh, we're going to want to continue even when we don't flop what we did. Uh, so we put 270 in. So let's go with a small bet, especially on this exact texture of 85. 85. <clears throat> All right, so uh, nothing really changes here. We haven't connected at all. I'd honestly be more surprised to see him check than virtually any size bet. Um, just making sure I haven't connected. Yep, and we're gonna fold. I love how Matt caught on to the fact that Dan could be four betting light. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. And it's the first time that it ever happened throughout the whole night. It's been four hours of play. And this is the first time he's four bet light. And yeah, boom. Uh, I think uh, that hand was played well on all fronts. I know it probably looks like spewy from Matt's side, but uh, the fact is he does have an equity driven hand um, and he's against the button. So really what it comes down to is if you think that there's capacity for somebody to be doing something too widely, mm -hmm. well, when they're, op when they're in a position that they're opening 50% of their hands, now they have a lot to choose from to choose the four bet. It's yeah. really hard to balance that four bet range. What constitutes okay, something another, like uh, an equity driven hand? hand. Uh, a hand that has two two of the three major properties, so either showdown value, connectedness, or suitedness. Oh. And in this instance, it has at least connectedness and suitedness, and you could even make a small case for showdown value. Sure, yeah, queen high. You know, you can't really ever slow down. Fall into my typical open range, and as usual, I'm gonna just raise to 15 here. <laughs> Basically, I'm not really certain that he has better bluff catchers than ace king high once he starts checking. So like, I don't know that he really has like queens, kings, and aces to there. Put money in the pot with in some way, but when I'm in the cutoff. And there's a 5x from under the gun, which is effectively the low jack in 6 max. Really hard to justify putting money in the pot with this hand now. I can't really 3-bet it, even though it has an ace blocker. It's just going to play too badly in a 3-bet pot. Flatting is pretty awkward, and I think ultimately folding is just going to be best. So I'm going to give this one up. Well, here we go again. Another pretty strong hand. We definitely want to continue with a raise here. We're in position this time, so we can go slightly smaller. Um, I think I'm gonna go with, the open's bigger though, so it ends up evening out. I think we wanna go with like 3x a little bit more maybe. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so this player's been actually fruiting a fair bit recently, but he does at least say he had Ace King suited in previous hand. Mostly believe him. Um, uh, I'm also under the gun in this format, so my raise represents a little bit of strength. I don't think I'm perceived as super wide uh, in this lineup, so um, I'm gonna give this three bet credit, even though I could definitely peel. Um, I think this player has been sort of the tightest with re-raising pre-flop in this lineup, so I'm just gonna go ahead and fold. These are tight folds. I, it's 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 a fine beer fold. Hour. Yeah. Um, it's What's just that? that's it's a that's hour. a tight fold. <laughs> I'm just so surprised how right these guys are so often. Yeah, I, I think that speaks to the live element. And, uh, you know, whenever I'm kind of like biting my tongue a little bit where it's like, ah, it's kind of a tight fold. Like their intuitive sense and what they're observing is correct. Like that's why the tens totally. understands that it's Queens plus. That's why he understands that that's probably a premium. It's like, I'm opening from a position where I shouldn't get three bet a lot. And this guy's seemingly wide open, like seems off. All right. Definitely good enough to open. Straightforward. Ten. Uh, 
Okay, so we have an open to 10 and looking at a pocket pair on the button. Um, it, I don't think it's like as standard to call as it might be in some lineups because both players behind me are capable of three betting, but um, I do think it's fine to call out these depths and that's what I'm gonna do here. Twelve spins. Heads up. Okay. 9-3-3. Um, fairly dry. You know, there's a flush draw, fairly dry texture. Um, I think this is probably a good spot to maybe use a club as a way to vary whether we maybe check call or fire. Uh, we do not have a club here. I think bleeding more towards betting, just kind of staying aggressive. And uh, we could probably follow through on some turns here as well. Uh, I think a queen, um, a 10, pretty good. Ace, not a horrible card for me to bet for sure. Um, you know, I think we'll probably just go small because of the texture of the board here. Um, but we do want to maybe get it up to like half pot, just being out of position. So. Yeah, 10, 27, so we'll go, we'll go 15. 15 is the bet. That. Yeah. All right, so <laughs> this player and I have played a pot very similar to this where the flop came out, uh, 933, three, it was rainbow. We were blind versus blind that time, I had king 10, uh, got owned. Um, here, uh, still a very clear call. If I'm calling with king high in that spot, I'm definitely calling with sixes here. Um, planning to call down at least two streets, depending on uh, like what the run it is. There are a couple cards where I could consider folding turns, but um, clear cut call on the flop. All right, so this is, I think, one of the better turn cards for me to barrel again. Um, his button range here, he can have some 9x that we don't really expect to get to fold. His clubs aren't gonna fold to, uh, you know, reasonable sizings. Uh, you can have king-queen, one club. You can have queen-jack, one club. Uh, so there are ways where we get we bet here and get called, but I think just in the name of keeping pressure on and you know we have plenty of queens here too that continue uh on the flop so we could certainly turn a queen here and we would we would want to continue being aggressive and then obviously if we river a 10 here we can kind of go off and look for a big bet so i think we continue here um uh, should be 57 in there so i think we go probably if we had just a queen we would probably <coughs> stick half pot somewhere in there maybe just a little bigger to charge the flush draws a little more so uh Go 35. 35 is the bet. Okay, so he keeps betting here for 35. Uh, the Queen of Diamonds is a pretty interesting card. It brings in uh, virtually every possible backdoor here. Um, there are also Queen X of Clubs combos here that do improve to beat us. Um, there are a lot of hands that I just wouldn't even consider folding here because this card. Uh, allows so many of his bluffs to continue, but with my exact hand, uh, one of the weakest pairs, I think we're pretty on the line here. Um, I, I honestly, I'm not leaning any particular direction except for the fact that we played a hand together already that was not this board, but a similar concept where I'm just calling a position very, very light, and I sort of assumed that that's gonna um, get him to be bluffing a little bit less often. Uh, and it's also important to note that the hands that he can bluff here have just an insane amount of equity against my exact two cards um, for the most part. Uh, he could be barreling very wide here, but I just don't. He could be barreling super wide here. I just don't really think that he uh, will be in this moment. Now he could be just because it's the last 10 minutes uh, kind of forcing it, but we're not gonna try to keep him honest here. We're just gonna let it go. And for the last hand, what do you think of that? It was a good one to end on. Uh, I, I think everyone played the hand okay. Matt actually can call that size. Uh, yeah. I, I think that Daniel should be betting closer to pot there. Um, you know, he has a pretty uncapped range, but he is opening from the button, so he's pretty wide. 
Uh, I understand where his thought process went with trying to rep top pair, mm -hmm. but it's just like Matt's really capped at having like a nine or worse. That is, of course, the infamous Phil Helmet was listening in on the stream the whole time, as you can see. Good. Let's take a look at uh, who's up and down for today. Looks like Matt Hunt definitely crushed. Now he did rebuy, so he has a has a little bit more in there than uh, regular. He took a few 